Hello friends, Naya Swami Hriman here and it's time for Ask a Yogi. I was opening up my favorite book, Autobiography of a Yogi, and I came to this page in this paragraph, which I'll explain more after I read it. This is a vision Yogananda had of the battlefields of Europe during World War I. One day, he writes, I entered a motion picture house to view a newsreel of the European battlefields. World War I was still waged in the West. The newsreel recorded the carnage with such realism that I left the theater with a troubled heart. Lord, I prayed, why dost thou permit such suffering? To my intense surprise, an instant answer came in the form of a vision of the actual European battlefields. The horror of the struggle, filled with the dead and the dying, far surpassed in ferocity any representation of the newsreel. Look intently, a gentle voice spoke to my inner consciousness. You will see that these scenes now being enacted in France are nothing but a play of light and shadow. They are the cosmic motion picture as real and as unreal as the theater newsreel you have just seen, a play within a play. But my heart was not comforted. The divine voice went on, Creation in light and shadow both, else no picture is possible. The good and evil of Maya, delusion, must ever alternate in supremacy. If joy were ceaseless here in this world, would man ever seek another? Without suffering, he scarcely cares to recall that he has forsaken his eternal home. Pain is a prod to remembrance, and the way of escape is through wisdom. I want to emphasize at first that explanations for this world of pain and suffering can never satisfy the heart. The explanations, however, do point the way to wisdom, as he writes here. I think it's an important point to understand. Well, several points. One is, as Jesus said, the poor ye shall have with you, but I me, or whatever he said, you shall not have always with you. What he means by that is that pain and suffering are the warp and woof of human life and the drama on this planet in this world of maya, of ceaseless change. And that when Jesus says, I you do not have always with you, is equivalent to saying that we don't always have the God's eye view, the transcendent view of this world of light and shadow, dark and light. And so we should, we should strive to achieve that God's eye view, and the secret to achieving that comes in prayer and meditation. Just as in nightly sleep we withdraw from the drama in order to rest, so too with prayer and meditation, we withdraw from the drama of the senses and the mind in order to rest in the transcendent stillness of the Christ within ourselves. And so this is, this is the lesson, because when Jesus said, the poor ye shall have with you always, it's what he wrote here in the book, which is that without the ceaseless play, alternating play of good and bad, light and dark, and so forth, the drama wouldn't go on. Just as the movie itself is light being, the one light being filtered through the film in order to create the appearance of the great drama that during the movie we laugh and we cry. Same thing with our movie, um, our the life, our life, which is our movie. It's the inner light of life consciousness that allows us to see and participate in the drama of the ceaseless change. And only when we turn our attention back to the 
you might say the filmmaker or to the machinery that produces and throws the light out through our senses in order to uh, participate until we put our attention on that inner beam of light. We, we, we're caught in the dream. You know, when we dream at night and the bad guys are chasing us down the street with knives and guns, um, you know, as you just said, the poor you have always with you, but not I, we, we, we can't have that transcendent experience of light and dark because we're caught in the dream. And there's no sense um, wishing that away. We have to respond to those bad guys chasing us down the street in our dream in some way, or maybe maybe they get us and the dream's over. But if we awake from that dream, screaming and crying perhaps, then we realize, oh, it was a dream. And so to awake from this dream, this is the matrix. This is the matrix of God's dream in which we are participants. And to awake from it, we must, just as the body withdraws in sleep, so we must withdraw in prayer and meditation in order to experience the divine light, which is to say the lightness of non-involvement, the lightness of calmness, the lightness of an uplifted consciousness towards God, towards the light out of which all things come. When Lord Buddha escaped his palace seeking the solution to pain, uh, to illness, old age, and death, um, he discovered it through meditation, through the middle way, not asceticism on the one, self-denial, extreme self-denial on the one hand, nor extreme self-indulgence on the other, but the middle way of calmness. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about that middle way, the way of stoicism, the way of non-attachment, the way of meditation. And so um, I can't comfort your heart with, with viewing the pain and suffering, but you can achieve the wisdom of the transcendent state in order to be useful. Why be dragged down into pain and suffering of other people? That doesn't really help them. If you can remain even-minded and calm amidst the great drama of life, then that's the contribution you can make.